Hello! We're on part nine, our last and final part of biological psychology. We're going to be talking about nature, nurture, and evolutionary psychology real quick. There's not a lot of vocabulary words in this one, so we're just going to uh, jump right in. Number one, what are we made of? So <clears throat> people who want to look at what we're made of are called behavior geneticists. So they get this word geneticist from this word gene, which we're going to talk about in a moment. So these are people that want to look at how what we're made up of affects our behavior. Uh, fancy name. So we have chromosomes, DNA, and gene. Um, also behavior geneticists want to look at more specifically like what are the power and the limits of genetics in your environment on behavior. So how do these things affect your behavior and how much do they influence your behavior? Okay. So what is that stuff that makes you up that might influence your behavior or might limit your behavior? Uh, chromosomes, DNA, and genes. Here's a picture of kind of a cell and what, how this kind of works together. So let's kind of uh, have an analogy here. Um, so there was a king of Spain, King Philip II, and he was kind of a paranoid king, and he built this really elaborate palace to live in. It had tons of hallways, tons of rooms, um, and the reason why he did that is because if anybody wanted to kill him, he wanted them to get lost trying to find him or trying to get out. And so imagine that, like you basically needed a map to get through that place. And like even people who wanted to see him, who he wanted to see him, couldn't even find his office, like where he was working because it was so hard. He basically needed a map to get in there. It was so elaborate. Imagine that every cell in your body contains the plans for that palace. Instead of containing the plans for that palace, like the rooms, the hallways, which way they go, what each door has inside of it, imagine the plans for your body is contained in every cell. So what your body is made up of, how each and every single part of your body is made and what it's made for and what it's going to do. Just like those hallways, uh, the map would tell you exactly which hallway goes where and what each room in that hallway is. So chromosomes are like the book that would tell you about the palace. Chromosomes tell you, uh, uh, make up a, a, a these books that tell you about what your, your body's all about. Um, the chromosomes are like the chapters in that book. So there's actually 46 chapters in your book about the body that every single cell has in your body. It tells you exactly what every part of your body does, how it works, etc. You get 23 of these chromosomes from your uh, mom and 23 chromosomes from your dad for a total of 46, right? So you have 46 chapters. Each one of these chapters is different. These chromosomes are made up of these strands of DNA. Here's a picture of one, right? There are this double helix. If you take a biology, you've heard of DNA before. Uh, they're made up of these strands. It's made up of proteins. And these uh, in these DNA are made up of even more small things called genes. Genes are like the words of, the, of your book. Okay, so we're taking this analogy uh, all the way through here. So the chromosomes are like the chapter. Your DNA is what makes up those chapters, and the genes are like the words, right? There's about 30,000 different genes or different words in each chapter, um, or actually in the whole book. So about 30,000 genes that you have, and the genes uh, tell you what each part of your body is going to look like or which each part of your body is going to do or what it could do. Okay, so these genes uh, tell us this. Now genes don't necessarily um, do what they say they're capable of doing. They have to be exposed to an environment that will allow them to do that. So imagine like a bag of tea, right? You get to go to the store and you, know, you want some tea, you get some blueberry something, green tea, I don't know. You get some flavored green tea. Well, it looks the same. You don't actually know what that gene does until you change its environment. Until you take that tea bag, you plop it in that hot water, and then that hot water, then you start smelling it, you start seeing it, you taste it, it tastes different, and it actually expresses that gene, right? So the environment expresses the gene. Um, genes don't. Genes are just kind of the tea bag. They're not. They don't really do a whole heck of a lot. They've got the potential to do a lot of things, but they don't do a whole heck of a lot just by themselves. They have to have an environment that exposes them to something to let them express themselves. And so that's how you got to think about genes, is that they don't determine our behavior, but they can help uh, help determine our behavior if they're, if they're exposed to an environment uh, that will allow them to do that. Okay? 
Um, next, we kind of look at twins. Um, one of the things that we learn, we want to talk about when we talk about uh, how does all this stuff, right? We talked about the behavior geneticists. How does your genetics affect your behavior? Well, the best way to try to figure that out is to look at twins. Uh, there's two types of twins. You've got identical twins and fraternal twins. Identical twins share uh, a single, come, come from a single egg. So they share the exact same DNA. Oh, why, why did I put a G? DNA. All right, they have the same DNA. They get an egg. It goes and it splits, and then you become two, right? This egg kind of splits in half. It becomes two identical, uh, identical, uh, uh, identical babies. I'm losing the word here. Fraternal twins are two, two separate, completely separate babies, completely separate DNA, completely separate everything. They just share the same uh, womb, right? They're both inside mommy's tummy at the same time. They're no more similar than uh, a brother and a sister born in different years. The similarity that they do share is that they have the same environment while they're uh, being born. I mean, while they're growing and before they get born, they share the same environment. So that kind of keeps them the same. Another name for uh, identical twins is a monozygotic. Mono means one. One and a zygote is uh, what a, a stage of before, as the uh, egg gets developed, before it becomes the fetus, it, it's, a, it's a zygote. So monozygotic, one, it comes from one. Um, and you might guess that the fraternal twins are called dizygotic, right? Because they come from di means two, like a, pair, like a dice that you roll, two dice, right? Die. Uh, so monozygotic, dizygotic, you might want to know those names. Um, they might show up on the exam. Now, how do these genes, uh, some ways that they express themselves? Well, there's these things called genotypes, phenotypes. Again, this is biology stuff. Uh, if you had biology, you remember, probably remember these words. Genotype is what the actual words say, and phenotype is actually how it looks, um, how it expresses itself. Um, so you may have uh, DNA that says that... Um, you, your mom might have a brown, uh, blue eye, and your dad has gives you a gene for brown eyes, right? So this is blue. Well, brown is a dominant gene, and so while well, your DNA says that you have one uh, chromosome or part of a chromosome that says blue, the phenotype, what it actually looks like, is going to be brown. Now, you're going to see brown because phenotype is what you see, is how it expresses itself. The genotype is what it actually is. Um, so, yeah, see, it is. Moving on. And so we, we study these twins because they are excellent, excellent opportunities for us to test all this stuff out. We say, well, if they came from the same mom, then they have the same genetics, right? And so we can do a lot more stuff with how does the environment affect them, right? And if they ha are fraternal twins, you know, they don't necessarily have the same genetics, but they ha a lot of times have the same environment, right? Because they're growing up together. And then we go and we look at, sometimes we look at identical twins that are separated at birth. So now they have the same genes, but completely different environments. And likewise with fraternal twins. Um, so example, Alzheimer's uh, and like an identical twin is about uh, the instance, if one has Alzheimer's, the other one's going to get Alzheimer's is about 60%. So it's fairly high. Uh, in fraternal twins, it drops down to about 30%, right? So both twins, these guys share the same DNA, much more likely to get it. These guys don't share the same DNA, even though, though they look, they might look very similar. Um, they're, they're not the same. Okay, moving on. Um, which is what actually what I was just talking about here. You get your separated twin studies, biological versus adoptive relatives, and her heritability. Um, heritability is how likely is a specific uh, gene expression or a specific trait likely to be passed down. Um, and so we look at that because just because something's uh, heritable doesn't mean that that's how you're going to be. And so it's... Uh, it could influence it, but it doesn't tell us exactly what's going to happen. It just tells us it could be an influential. Um, oops. We move. We talk a little bit now about evolutionary psychology, which is uh, 
kind of we look at all these things. So evolutionary psychology, um, they, they're looking at a number of things. A couple of things that they're looking at is they want to know whether organisms varied offspring or how they compete for su survival. Okay, so they want to know they want to see like how you compete for survival. And we look at things like heritability, like different gene traits that might help you survive. And so evolutionary is looking for basically two things. They want you to, uh, when we get down to natural selection, it's looking for, it says genes that allow you, or traits that allow you to survive and reproduce are more likely to be passed along. It's a pretty simple idea, right? It makes sense. If something's gonna help you live, and something's going to help you create more of your type, it's more likely to be passed along than the traits that don't do that, right? Because the other guys are going to die off. It's pretty simple, right? If you keep, if it keeps you alive and it makes more of you, you're more likely to pass that along than if you die. And so that's basically the idea of natural selection. It's not really uh, some, shouldn't be too controversial. It's pretty straightforward. Evolutionary psychology kind of looks at how natural selection how these genes that we just mentioned, how this stuff influences, how we compete for survival, um, are, and how our offspring that survive more likely to pass along their genes to ensuring different um, generations, um, how populations can change over time. And so during this uh, natural selection thing, once in a while, you're going to get things uh, called mutations. So when all these chromosomes come together, right? You have all these cells and chromosomes. Sometimes these things uh, change a little bit from what they should be, right? It's kind of like you're making a, a batch of soup or stew or something and you accidentally add some different ingredients or one of the ingredients is a little bit uh, off or overripe or something and it changes the flavor of the stew. Well, maybe that flavor of the stew that it changed to is something that you like better. And if you like it better, maybe you continue making it that way because more people want to buy it. I mean, if you're a chef, maybe more people want to buy it. They like their new stew better, so you change it. It helps sell more stew, so you change the recipe. It's kind of what a mutation is, and this is kind of the idea of how uh, evolutionary psychology or evolution uh, uh, works, is that things that are beneficial on accident may get to stick around, and uh, if, it, if it is beneficial, then those mutations are going to be passed passed on. If, if, it, if it helps somebody survive and they had a mutation, then that mutation may get passed down. If it gets passed down to two people, then now you have two chances for that mutation to get passed along and so on and so forth. So that's kind of what a mutation is.